In today's news, we have information on the Florida Man Challenge. Let's go learn more about it. How did you end up picking your teams, Ian? And an update on the Final Four. We are making stories by teams for teams. Creating a platform. Finding character. And giving others a voice. This is SVTV. Hey Vikes, I'm Morgan. And I'm Aaron, and your daily news starts now. Augie went to check out a new social media trend happening recently. Let's check it out. Hey Vikes, you may have heard about the Florida Man Challenge that's been going around the internet lately. Let's go learn more about it. The Florida Man Challenge is a challenge that originated on social media in which people Google their birthday and the phrase Florida Man and see what stories pop up. For example, my birthday is on December 24th, so when I googled Florida Man December 24th, I got Time Traveling Florida Man Crashes Car Into Building. We talked to several students and teachers to find out what their Florida Man story was. My birthday is September 22nd. Florida Man Rides Manatee, dares police to arrest him, gets arrested. Nice. <laughs> My birthday is May 24th. Okay, armed Florida man yells, get out of my country to two McDonald's customers. That sounds really fun. Make sure to check out on your own story if you haven't already. Now for your daily announcements. Tuesday is the deadline for all prom outside date forms. If you haven't picked one up, they're available in the front office. There are many clubs looking for officers. If you're interested in being a spirit club officer, talk to Mrs. Geis. Also, Stuco is looking for officers. If interested, talk to Mrs. Alicur or Mr. Riley. The Sunrise Optimist Endowment Association will offer three $500 scholarships to seniors this year. Application deadline is Friday, April 12th. Graduation is right around the corner. If you would like to speak at graduation, please check your class of 2019 Schoology page for more information. Sophomores and juniors interested in Washburn Tech should attend the open house on Tuesday, April 16th. Students interested in driver's ed can now enroll on the high school webpage. See Mr. Tinsley for more information. The Family Service and Guidance Center is offering new, well, a new smartphone app and a website called Seven Cups. Here's Emery with more information. Hey Vikes, I'm here with Ellie Key and Callie Jensen and they're going to talk to us about the Seven Cup app. So who created the Seven Cup app? The Seven Cup app was created by Glenn Moriarty and it was picked up by Family Service and Guidance Center to bring it to the schools surrounding us to be able to speak confidentially about how you feel. Uh, what is the Seven Cup app? The Seven Cup app is an app where you can communicate directly to people who can help you with certain problems that you're struggling with, if that's anxiety or depression or just really any issues that happen in your life. It is completely confidential. It's an app and um, you can anonymously talk to people who can help you get through whatever you're struggling with. How do you think it will affect the students around us? I think it will affect the students around us by giving them an outlet that's not teachers or counselors or the other kids around them because some kids don't feel comfortable doing that. They don't feel comfortable reaching out to people in person and so if it's completely confidential and you can just talk about whatever you want to. I think it'll help kids really open up about things that they've been struggling with. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, there are posters around the school and you can grab one of these to help you see what it's more about. You can download the app or visit their website online and just once again it's completely anonymous and yeah. And the, the code slash password is talk. Thanks guys. Make sure to check out the app. Now back to your anchors. Thank you, Emery. If you need to talk to someone, this is a great source to use. Now that is all for your daily announcements. In sports, we'll have an update on your bracket challenge.
Volleyball has a parent meeting on April 11th in the Commons at 6 p.m. Anyone who was un unable to attend the yesterday's meeting of the auxiliary dance team can pick up a tryout packet in W12. T today, Grayson Seavers signed to play soccer in Northwest Missouri State. Congrats to her. The NCAA Final Four is this weekend. Here's more information on how each team got there. Hey Vikes, welcome back to the SBTV Bracket Challenge. The Elite Eight round has just gotten over and there were a lot of upsets. There is actually only one number one seed left and uh, we actually have a student here that happened to get all four Final Four picks correct. So uh, I went to talk to him. Hey Vikes, I'm here with Ian who uh, actually managed to get all four Final Four teams correct. So uh, how'd you end up picking your teams, Ian? Uh, well, I looked at like who they played beforehand, and like if they beat good teams, then figured they'd beat more teams. So just kind of guessing though. Good strategy. Um, so who do you think will win the tournament? Oh, Michigan State in a landslide. All right. Well, there you go, Vikes. We'll have to see if his picks are correct for the national championship on Monday. Here is Cade with some more info on the Final Four tomorrow. Gets it to Barrett. He's in the paint. He slashes. He shoots. And, and watch for his foot speed, too. First one, no. You got to think of that UCF game. Block out. Second one, he tries to miss it. But it drops. Tillman up ahead. Winston. No one near him. And he's going to come out with it. And Michigan State is headed to Minneapolis. To Moretti. Moretti just needs to hang on to the ball. He didn't, though. He wants the ball. It's a turnover. Perkins aims, shoots, score! Off the foot of Owens, picked up by Perkins, puts it up. That's it. There's a new member of the Final Four Club, and they hail from Lubbock, Texas. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Seven seconds. Swings it. Washington fires. No. Rebounded by Harper. And it's over. Anything can happen in March. For the first time, Auburn is going to the Final Four. Rundown and the subsequent pass to Diakite to tie it. And that's it. Virginia advancing to the Final Four for the first time since 1984. Since the Final Four games are coming up this weekend, I decided to go look at ESPN and see what times they start. The first game between Virginia and Auburn starts at 5.09 p.m. Central. The second game is between Texas Tech and Michigan State, and that starts at 7.49 p.m. Make sure to make time for these games because they'll be pretty interesting. Thanks, Ike. It'll be interesting to see how the Final Four shakes things up. That's all for sports. Now let's head over, head over to Josh to see how warm it's going to be this weekend. Good afternoon to you. Comfortable temperatures continuing throughout the rest of this week, but we do start to dodge some showers starting today. So by 3 o'clock this afternoon, you can see showers on a very hit and miss basis isolated throughout northeast Kansas. Not going to be looking at any sort of heavy rain, but some occasional sprinkles will be possible this afternoon. And then overnight tonight, perhaps a little bit more activity. Can't even completely rule out a rumble of thunder or two early tomorrow morning. But by the time we get too much after sunrise, most of this should start to clear out of the area, though it will stay mostly cloudy for the rest of the day. Now, our next weather maker comes in by Saturday. So most of the rain going to come in Saturday night in the form of showers and thunderstorms. That could cause a mostly wet weekend with the exception of Sunday. But overall, it's not looking like a complete washout, just the chance for rain most of the weekend. So there's your seven day forecast. You can see temperatures jump way up into the 70s. How about 70 for Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, all with highs in the 70s. That's all for today. Have a great weekend. Thank you.